Greetings and happy Friday. This is Kevin Gemmel, the senior content writer for ChefWorks, and welcome to another episode of Perspectives. Now, this is our weekly Q&A where we talk to professionals from the culinary and hospitality industries. These can be chefs, servers, bartenders, baristas, culinary group executives, and it's our opportunity to chat with them about the state of the industry. Now, we are very fortunate this week to be joined by chef Stephen Coe, who is not only a four-time chopped champion, but it's this fourth time that we want to talk about because he had to go through a five-episode gauntlet just to get to the finale, where waiting for him was none other than Chef Bobby Flay. Chef, thank you so much for joining us on Perspectives. Let's first talk about those first five episodes and that grind you had to go through. Uh, it, was, it was awesome. It was definitely intense. The competition was a lot, you know, it was a lot of fierce competitors there so it, that was the much more entertaining part and exciting part too i wasn't worried about the finale because i had to get there first you know finale is the easy part at the end of the day there's all they're all grand champions of chop which means they've won multiple times and they're just as hungry as i was so now let's talk about that final episode you get there what were the ingredients that you had to use and what was sort of the inspiration behind your dish okay so the four ingredients were lobster a fried milk, which is like a mozzarella stick with zero flavor to it. <laughs> Dried whole duck, which is pretty much a lot of bones, a little bit of duck jerky. And sea beans, which I call them salty fingers. Um, um, lobster's my wheelhouse. I own a lobster truck. I have traps, so I'm like all day long. Um, I challenged him to a ravioli and I had a structured game plan thinking he's gonna go simple ravioli and I was gonna go freestyle. And I could get a little more plating presentation on a freestyle than looking at a classic ravioli. And it actually worked in into my favor. So now, how much prep work did you do going into this? Had you studied episodes of Beat Bobby Flay? Did you kind of have an idea of what you thought he was gonna do? Did you game plan for this? I definitely trained harder than I normally do on this one because it was a lot more at stake, as I said before. Uh, the money's higher, it's a $50,000 round, and I wasn't going there to lose. You know, um, I studied how fast he cooks, his turns, his movements, the way he seasons, um, and his mentality on plating. So that's why I threw an open-ended idea as far as addition, which a ravioli, you can go 15 different ways on a ravioli. And I already had my game plan, and I knew I could put anything in that basket into that ravioli. And it just happened to fall into, you know, a lobster, which, okay, <laughs> let's do it. You know, while it, before he even got his basket on, um, like unpicked his basket, I already had lobster cooking, you know, <laughs> and the pasta was, was done. So you talked about the, the money and obviously there's some financial motivation to this. You want to play to win, but where does that competitive come from? Where's that spirit and that drive come from? What's the origin story there for you? Uh, I grew up in the competitive world from age of 12, I believe I was competing. For, so it's just like an adrenaline. I'm a junkie without an addiction in a way, you know, I love the competing. I love the talk smack. Well, the best one liner on that, on that show was they asked what was in my pot and I said it was Bobby Flay's self-esteem. And now, right? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Right? And just like the chance of failure is is a motivator. Do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, people don't like to fail, but I lose a lot. I win a lot. But it's it's all playful, you know? It's people do have their job. My job is to compete. I love competing. And like I said, the lifestyle, it's almost for me. So there's some games and shit that goes along with it for sure. So what can we uh, what can we expect from you for the next year, year and a half or so? What do you got coming up on the horizon? I have a couple new Chopped episodes coming up, which uh, I believe they'll be the biggest tournament they've ever hosted. I thought the Bobby Flay one was, and they threw another curveball at me. I'm like, all right, let's do this. I'll go. <laughs> another mental game of be mental beating I take when I go. I'm working on my own show called Dangerous Seats, where we're traveling around looking for the perfect ingredient experience to build a cookbook. And it's a video biography pretty much to follow me around the country. Fantastic. And uh, I know you've also got a lot of charitable endeavors that you're working with outside of the kitchen. Is there something specific that you'd like to plug or you'd like to tell people about? Yeah, I'm showcasing, um, there's two right now. I'm backing up, it's called Tick Talking Information Center where they have out throughout the country, which they help out people with vision and um, issues with vision, whether they're blind or people losing their sight. 
I back with them and I do part of the fundraiser is I cook in the dark. So I'm blindfolded cooking and do a cooking demo that way, which is pretty entertaining, but it's a fun way to help people see from another standpoint. And you know, I caught myself and I dropped stuff and I burned myself, but that's part of the whole, you know, the whole thing is like, that's what they go through, you know? So I'm not taking it for granted. And then the other one is, um, it's a farm that help, it's almost like a retreat for kids with cancer. It's called the Magical Moon Farm and it's a bit Boston based. Gotcha. Well, Chef, congratulations on all the success and also uh, for all the work that you're doing for your community. It's really appreciated. And thank you so much for joining us on Perspectives. Thank you. My thanks again to Chef Stephen Coe for joining us on Perspectives. Now, if you like what you saw, please make sure you subscribe to the ChefWorks YouTube channel here. And if you want to see more videos of Perspectives, you can follow those here. Please also make sure you're following us on our other social media channels. That includes LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Now, if you want to read more of my interview with Chef Co., you can follow the text in to blog.chefworks.com. Once you're there, we have other features on culinary and hospitality professionals. We've got Weekly Bites, which is our roundup of industry news. Or if you want to just learn more about Chefworks and some of our products, we've got stories on that too. So until next time, eat well, drink well, and be well. We'll see you then.